you can hear me can you uh, leave a comment please okay doc turn down your volume Okay, good. So it's up and going. I'll just wait for a few more people to pop in. Fourteen people there now. Bear with me. It's first time going live like this, so I'm just trying to see what's going on with my screen and my wife's watching for the comments. How's everybody doing tonight? I can't see the comments here anyway, so. Oh, happy uh, Memorial Day to uh, the friends down in the States. Yeah, it's nice being home. There's a lot of work to be done yet, though, Damien. Okay, so I can't see the comments up there, so. Anyway, I'll get started. There's 27 people viewing. People are going to come in as they come. So, tonight, I'm going to tie two Atlantic salmon patterns. One that's in the vise right now is called the blue fin. Uh, I had a question out on the Norvice page what people want to see. Uh, one guy said that he would like to see a pike fly, pickerel fly. So I don't do much of them. And I googled and this one popped up. So it's a variation of the Mickey fin which is a well known trout fly. And while pickerel will take anything. So for the materials, I'm going to be using flat tinsel, uh, red uni stretch, uh, oval French tinsel, yellow bucktail, red flash, and uh, blue for the collar, and a black head. The hook I'm using tonight is a Partridge Patriot in size 6 and the thread is Semperfly uh, Nano Silk Quavot. So I start the thread. And I start with the flat tinsel, gold side up, so that the silver will turn. And I usually do about four wraps. And then tie that up. And now I'll use the uni stretch in uh, Chinese red. And what I do when tying in the tags. 
I leave a piece on the end, wrap it forward, wrap it in, Tie that in and then bring this piece over top so it locks in the end so the floss doesn't fray and then tie that to the front. Snip that off. Put down a thread base. And this is where the oval tinsel comes in. This will be the rib. And I like putting it on the bottom. It ties in better. Clip that back and then take a piece of flat tinsel and what I like doing, well not what I like doing, the best thing about this Norvice is this next step, especially with these tinsel bodies, a half hitch, bring it over and then spin the body on and it makes it nice and tight. I find wrapping it the other way, doing it the old style way, you don't get it as smooth or as tight. And finish that, clip that off. And I wrapped this one by hand just because the silver tinsel is slippery. And then you tie that in. Snip that off. And here's the wing. So for the wing, I use bucktail yellow. You take a nice little clump. Some people do, some people don't, but I use a stacker. Get them all nice and straight. And tie the wing, first part of the wing on. bit of room at the head for the collar and you take a few pieces of red tinsel and this will be the middle of the wing Cut that about the same length as your wing. Oh, there's a little one there. 
And then for the top of the wing, you just take another clump of uh, that section of the bucktail that you cut from. Well, funny story. When we first got our dog, uh, Winnie, uh, she was flying, so we left her out one day. And, well, all my bucktail looks like this. So I all tore apart. She had a field day with all my bucktails. So, I don't know what section it is, <laughs> but right there I'm trying to get as close to the hide as I can. So what are the stats on the hook? Uh, the hook I'm using is a Partridge Patriot uh, number 6, uh, CS16 slash 1B. So you stack that piece. Ooh. Ooh, didn't stack very well. Let's try again. Doesn't have to be a big piece. I like measuring it out and then cutting it. Especially because it'll flare less. The bottom piece doesn't matter as much because you cover that up. And like I said, you want to leave a little bit of room in the head because now what we're going to do is take a blue piece of hen and what I like doing is stripping off all of the feathers. Now if it was a different piece of hackle and I didn't have that much fluff and that much stem I would use a hackle pliers but where I got a lot of stem I don't need to use them. So you tie it in from the tip. Trim that up. Secure that in. You watch your fingers. And you stroke all the fibers back. And you try to keep the wraps nice and tight into one another. And then you tie off the stem. Cut that. fold all your fibers back and what you want to do is make a nice head on it you don't want to choke the hackle well you want to run up upside the stem until it's felt fold it back nice and neat then you whip finish cut your thread as I find with the, the nano silk I use a razor blade I got two cameras this one's showing so <laughs> so anyway the nano silk is, will wear your scissors out so I use a razor blade then I put my thread on my post and I like using white thread for almost all my tying just because I can make the head whatever color I want I 
And now, I, for the glue, I use Solar Res Bone Dry Plus. And I put a nice even bead around the head. Take my bobkin, just spread it out a little bit. Let it soak into the thread. And then I spin my vise. It's another handy thing. With the Solarized product, you can spin your head and then your head comes out a little more even. And zap it with the light. And there is the first one. It's called the blue fin. So I was talking to Casey earlier and she didn't tell me if what the prizes were for uh, sharing. But usually at 50 shares they give away a prize. Uh, usually neck gaiter and uh, stripping guards. So for every 50 shares it's one one deal and then so on and so forth. Your phone. So also they started this trivia. So the first question is and you have there it's a two part there's two parts of the question and I want to see both the answers. Casey has the answer, so here we go. Salmon Salar Derives from a Latin meaning what? Salmon salar derives from a Latin meaning what? <clears throat> it's a two part question. So there's two meanings and I'd like to see both of them. So for the next fly, I am doing the big blue interval. Uh, salmon like blue. I've used this pattern once or twice and I've had hookups on it. It's similar to a lot of like productive flies like the blue charm and uh, so on. So I picked this one because I, well like it I guess. So for this pattern the tip is olive or olive oval gold. The tail is get golden crescent crest. The body is uh, royal blue with embossed rib. The wing is white with crystal flash and then again with the blue collar. So again I'm using the same hook as the last one, a Partridge Patriot uh, number six. This looks like salmon lantern. There's another one, there's another part to that Google might help you out with that one, but yes, that is partly right. But when I looked, there's actually a, there, there's another meaning as well. So, start your thread base. So for the tip, take a piece of oval and gold. I'm using medium. Salmon and Lantern. 
understand it. No. There's an, it, it, there's a Latin name that it derives from. So leap root is one of the names, but there is also another one that it comes from Latin. I did Google this. I have the picture on my phone of where I found it. So if anybody, so it says Leaper according to M. Barton, but more likely meaning, and then there's another one. So for the tip, I wrap in four. And bring that up to make a nice smooth body up to about the transition of the hook well if somebody copies Terry Landry they might be a winner but as of last week team members can't do it so whoever wants to copy Terry you're going to be a winner of something and Casey will get a hold of you so I wrapped in that now I start with my tail I wet it to keep all the fibers together golden crest I usually bring it back just past the bend of the hook and tie that up. And put a nice thread base. Terry, for sorry, no one told me we couldn't participate. Terry, you weren't around last week when I got the right answer and Norvice said that we weren't allowed. It's all right. Somebody gets a free answer. So for the embossed stuff, I usually tie it in in the back it's a little harder to work with than the oval or even the f normal flat so I just tie it in like that I take a piece of royal blue half hitch and bring it to my thread post what are you doing <laughs> so I, <laughs> I wrap my body you gotta watch out for the hook point because this one doesn't have the butt section and again, this is one of my favorite features because it keeps the body super tight and smooth. Let me clip that off. Sugar. Hmm. Well, that sucks. This is a part I don't like. 
because there is no way to fix that. But another handy thing with the Norvice, it strips off pretty easy. So let's try this again. Well, the embossed silver or and gold actually it happens to a lot because unlike the other tinsels, it's sharp and will cut your thread. I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna try to put it on the bottom. Like I do the other ones, it's just it, usually tougher to work with than uh, normal. Oh, Rick, my wife actually stole my other shirt that you sent me, so somebody's getting use out of it. She said I there was no need for me having two. Except for that, those things happen. They're doing a great job. Thanks, Terry. So again, half hitch. I don't like using my fingers for anything because they're rough. And usually phrase material and then around the hook. You want to leave room at the head again for the collar. Okay, let's try this again. Are you kidding me? I'm going to improvise a little bit. It's one thing I hate about using this embossed, but it has to happen on live. I tied the other one that wasn't part of the live. Perfect. Just gonna have a little bit thicker body, which isn't a big deal. Hey, you're doing good. You can't control the abilities of the materials, and that stuff is fragile. There we go. You gotta be careful up at the front that it doesn't cut your thread. There we go, improvise a little bit. It just makes a little bit thicker body, but it's not a huge deal. So then I take a clump of clear crystal flash. I 
and I cut that about halfway to the tail. So the answer was, I don't think anybody copied Terry. Okay, so a few people did copy Terry. It is Leaper and Resident of Salt. I knew the Leaper one, but I want to see if there was anything else a little bit tricky. And I didn't want to go just towards Atlantic Salmon or I'd have people mad at me. So I kind of made it even through the whole playing field. So then I measure up by wing. I do it this way because I find it flares less. And I'm using goat for the wing. It's one of my preferred white wing materials and then like the other I take and I strip off all the fluff and it's nice this way because I don't always need my hackle pliers and you tie that in from the tip cut off the extra just make sure that's nice and secure watch your fingers even though I don't think that's acceptable in today's world Try to keep germs off of things and wrap trying to stroke all the fibers back Chris Cook says, I think I had that answer before Terry did leave oh maybe uh, the streams are actually 20 seconds in delay. So sometimes we uh, don't see. That's why Casey at the end of the live will go back through the comments and she will make sure who actually got it first and who gets the prize. That way it's even and fair for everybody. So then whip finish and as I said before I like using the white so it's got a black head little arts and crafts and I take Solar as Bone Dry Plus is one of my favorite glues to use and a nice bead and take my bobkin and just try to get it to soak through this dust a little thick it got a little cold but it works and then when you spin it it evenly distributes and then zap it with the light. Dick Rochelle, what do you blacken the head with? Permanent marker. Right now, well, my, my wife doesn't know that I ordered the markers. But right now I'm just using black sharpie. I ordered the ones that were on Bren yeah, Braden uh, live last week because it has a bunch of different colors. And uh, yeah, 
but you can use Sharpies. Just the one that Braden had last week just come in a bunch of different colors. So, for the next trivia question. Let's see your phone. So... Where is it? Oh. Okay. So answer two. I mean, question two. I almost read you the answer already. How many different type of species of salmon are there? I'd like you to name four. How many? So you have to have the number of species. And then I want you to name four of them. I made it a little bit harder so people would think and try to get the answer. So for the last one, this one actually come from another Norvice ambassador. We were talking one day and uh, I think I've tied the rainbow, a Oops. rainbow. Oops, as you do count to, oh no, that was two Terry's and oh. um so uh this one we were talking and i think i i tied the the rainbow which is similar to this pattern but brit said well why don't you tie one with the norvice colors so that's what i did todd with seven kings like I Chinook. todd you're close Spring Atlantic Chum. But how many, Colin? Todd, you're close. Seven is not the right answer. I tried to do this one alone and then I Wikipedia. And uh, there's one that I've never heard of, so we'll see. James says 11, Coho Pink King Atlantic Salmon. Nope, it's wrong. The numbers are wrong. The, the the name the species that you guys are naming are correct. It's just the number. Okay, so back to the fly. So I in this one I incorporate it. The red, blue, green, orange, and purple for all the diff all the new legacy vices. I got the yellow because I didn't have a brass color, so I used yellow. Close. The number's still wrong. When somebody gets the number, I will uh, say all of them that I have found. So for the tail and the way or the throat, I use yellow for the original brass color. I use silver. Sharps is eight. Okay. Like yeah, eight is the right number. So I don't know who they're gonna give it to because I asked for four different species. Collins is eight, but he did. Yes, species. it's up to it's up to it's up to uh, uh, them. So actually, when I looked and I I thought there were seven too, but there's Atlantic salmon, Chinook salmon, Chum salmon. Coho salmon, Masu salmon, pink salmon, sockeye salmon, and Dan Ubi salmon. D A N U B E. That was taken taken off of Wikipedia. So, the silver in the tag and the wing, that is for the the regular legacy vice, and the black is for the posts. On all the other light vices until the new colored vices come. So this is when I create it because, like I said, me and Britt, another ambassador for Norvice, was talking, and she said I should use the colors. And well, this is what come out of it. Tim actually has two that I sent him. So 
again I'm using a Partridge Patriot number six hook and the thread is nano silk Tom Friedmars says it's seven notes steelhead trail or optimus is the eight Pacific salmon but unlike other Pacific salmon they are capable of repeat spawning and do not die after spawning it has been suggested that they be grouped with other fish as a Pacific trout uh, let me see. See if I can find it. Very quick. So, species. Oh. Actually, you know what? He was right. I don't know why on the one, the one table I found, uh, the Danbu salmon was part of it. So I guess it's going to have to probably go to Todd. So, yeah. Because there's also other ones from other Australian salmon, Dambu salmon, Hawaii salmon, and India salmon. But Todd is correct with seven. I should have took a screenshot of the first one I found, but on Wikipedia. Uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. So to start the fly, that was my mistake, I guess. So it is seven. And then the four that were named were species. So to start. Joey Sarks shirts his chicken salmon. Yeah. Where'd that fly go? Okay. Yeah, I'll take a screenshot of that and send to Casey. So to start this fly, I did lay down a thread base. Oh, the ribbing is just silver as well, just for the old R Legacy Vice. So, I tie in the flat, and I go about four turns, and tie that off, and bring it forward. And bring your thread back just to give you a nice even body. For the tail, I go back to the pheasant gold pheasant crest. And I tie that in. This one, I just to fancy it up a little bit, I included an ostrich hurl butt. So, when you wrap an ostrich hurl, there's a little st a stem 
so sometimes you got to turn the way you wrap it so it wraps on top of itself leaving the the feather part going back but there's a stem and then when you wrap it it just wraps right on top of the, the other leaving a nice butt so sometimes you might have to spin it the other way just in order for it to spin on right so since this one is up against something and not back here against nothing I won't hood this and then that also evens out the body but before I put the ribbon and that is silver small Okay. Yeah, so she must have found it. But so, well, for some reason, like I said, Wikipedia did show me eight when I did find it the first time. But on the page that I was just on, it showed me seven. So you wrap that. So now, starting off the fly. This went by color, and that's why I needed the fly for reference. Because I could put all the colors in, but the way that it was announced on opening day, it went red, blue, green, orange, purple on the post that he had shown everybody. So... So you wrap in a little of the red. And that's Chinese red I used. And then Royal Blue. And you wrap it just slightly over the red. Just so it blends a little better. So I wish I had the uh, blue and uni stretch. I find it does a way better job. Especially when you're doing multicolored bodies. Then I'm using uni stretch in the green. Tie that in. And you just wrap a little over the blue just to give that transition. orange And then purple. And I sometimes wet my fingers depending on what stretch you get. Sometimes it's a little bit fuzzier than the other ones. 
and then you wrap your purple in. Dry that off. And then wrap your rib. I like to try to keep it on each of the tie-in spots. So if there is a little bit of a hump, it will take away a little bit and make it look a little bit smoother. You clip the rib off. And for the throat. I take a few little bit of a yellow hen saddle. And tie it underneath. Liam Martin says there's only one salmon. The rest are on a porn and cuss. If you want to be super technical, maybe, but they are all considered salmon. And funny, I didn't know what a chum salmon was until I went to BC. And I still think they're one of the most underrated fish to fish for. I had I had a blast chasing the chum salmon. They're they are fighters. So you come back up to the top. And tie in silver for the underwing. Jane says there's 11 types of salmon. Your question only goes for most of the Pacific and one Atlantic and the big spine, I think. Oh, wow. Well, I guess you're really trying to cut. Yes, okay. North American salmon. If you want to be technical. So, you put in the silver flash, everybody beat me up. So for the wing on this one, I'm using Black Bear from yours truly, Terry Landry. If you need any materials, he's awesome to deal with. Don't hesitate to look at him up. He is also a Norvice team member. So, the black bear. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this black bear was shot in New Brunswick too, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right, Terry? So I put that in my stacker. Jody says the funny thing is I don't fish for salmon. I want trout, bass, and panfish. Well, Jody, I guess you're going to have to try the uh, salmon fishing. You're close to the Canadian border. Todd Friedman says, when you take a driver's license test in Washington, you have to know the number of salmon to pass. <laughs> so, <laughs> I measure out the wing. I like doing this way, like I said, because it frays less I find. Just the way I like doing it. And then you tie in the black bear. Roll up the head. And then whip finish. Oh, look at that. 
close to nine o'clock. And then for this one, just because I got a blue vise, I'm going to use a blue Sharpie. Uh, that, oh, I guess you must be on the Pacific side. I've just learned about that too. So most of the Pacific salmon do go upstream and, uh, die. The Atlantic salmon do not. They return to the ocean after every year. So they go up to spawn and then they'll go back to the ocean and migrate up towards Greenland and Norway area. So this this pattern has not been tried on Atlantic salmon yet. Um, I hope to get the Newfoundland this year, but we'll see with all the COVID restrictions. Jody says I'm an Ajax Ontario. Okay, so you might. I thought it was another Jody. Sorry. Jody Sharp. Yeah. So, like I said before, I use my bobkin. And just spread it around just so it gets in there when I spin my vise it evenly spreads and zap it with the light Can you remind us of the name? so this one doesn't really have a name um, I haven't fished it it hasn't worked it was just a tribute to the Norvice legacy series vices um it'll get a name if somebody ever catches a fish on it so if you want to give her a go i know other patterns uh, uh, colorful patterns like the skittles um the rainbow uh there's another one called the parrot they have all worked well uh this one hasn't been tried yet so i'm not really giving it a name quite yet a uh, few people has got them, or got them to try, and uh, like I said, I sent Tim too, just because it was a tribute to uh, Norvice and the new Legacy colors coming out. And uh, like I said, I hope to fish it this summer when I go to Newfoundland, but that'll all depend on uh, COVID restrictions and how far we go. Is there any other questions? Uh, Casey said to leave it around 9 o'clock an hour where it's Memorial Day. We don't want to go too, too much into it. The three flies that I had picked out actually got me to an hour, so that's good. There's a few. Norvice says, let's call it Legacy C. David Laundrie says, call it the NV Tribute. Yeah, they're all good names. Personally, it's... Not good to name a fly until after it catches a fish. So we will, I'll definitely keep that in mind or if somebody catches a fish on it before I do uh, and lets me know, I might even let them name it. Uh, which one? The first one? Oh, yes. There's a lot of bases that look the same. Like, there's a Skittle, there's a Skittles wet flat, uh, wet fly that's made in, uh, Newfoundland that has similar colors. That's why I based it off of how Norvice presented them when they did the big reveal. So, like I said, red, blue, green, orange, purple. I think Tim still has that on his table. So, next week if he shows up, I think Tim's supposed to be tying. Casey, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. He decided that fishing was more important than uh, tying, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I think he still has it on the table. So, hopefully, if not, there's pictures around of when the big reveal happened. And you can go back and look at it. Any other questions? Jody Sharp. Make sure it catches lots of fish and name it after wife. 
And every time you use it, you're thinking of her. And when you do well, it will, she will be flattered. <laughs> no. no. I try to keep fishing and home life separate. This is the only time she's allowed in my fly tying room. She better feel lucky. Okay, if there's no other questions, it's 9 o'clock. Um, I will go through and I will look at all the comments that were done and I will try to answer anybody's questions if they have it, if they view it later. Uh, I will be sending the material list again to uh, Casey because this will be going up on YouTube either later tonight, which I don't think it will, or tomorrow morning. So I'll try to get that to her uh, off to her as soon as I can. But um, I can't see how many shares there are. I don't know if we did make it to 50. I know at one time. Who knows? Casey knows. So she'll, uh, if there is, she'll uh, be able to uh, give the prizes out. And sorry about the kerfuffle about the last one. Like I said, I seen on Wikipedia 8 for the North American salmon. Uh, but then when I looked at Wikipedia again, it showed me 7. So I hope you guys all. My friends in the States, hope you guys all had a good Memorial Day weekend. And uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Have a good night, guys.